This is like the SNL crisis in the 80s. We're not talking about a failure of this bank, but that banks could, you know, fail. So that's then, that's, then, that's then not off the, the question. The, this is clearly an example of something breaking. We can assume that there's serious contagion here. Okay, so when you use the word contagion, it begs the question, why could this happen at other banks? Well, for one basic reason, Silicon Valley Bank was doing what a lot of other banks are doing right now. SVB took customer deposits, and they went and invested that money in other things like U.S. government debt and mortgages. And they had been doing that for quite a while. Well, when the Fed started to hike rates aggressively, that meant that Silicon Valley Bank immediately lost money on those investments. And at the very same time as they were losing money, as interest rates rose, those bank customers, those depositors, they needed to withdraw more money. So SVB started to sell assets, losing money just to raise the money needed to make good on deposit withdrawal requests. And then that turned into a spiral of fear and a race among customers to withdraw assets, the run on the bank. And yesterday afternoon, the CEO of Silicon Valley Bank, his name is Greg Becker, hosted a call with clients and said, quote, my ask is to stay calm because that's what's important. We have been long-term supporters of you. The last thing we need you to do is panic. Well, when that's the ask as a bank, you're toast. And one person familiar with the situation asking me the hypothetical question tonight, what prevents runs on a whole bunch more banks next week? Unclear. It is an important moment. And tonight, the Deputy Treasury Secretary, Wally Adiemo, is trying to calm fears in an exclusive interview with CNN. Federal regulators are paying attention to this um, particular financial institution and that when we think about the broader financial system, um, we're very confident in the ability in the resilience of the system. Allison Greenberg is out front. She is the CEO of Ruth Health. It's a maternity care startup that has money deposited in Silicon Valley Bank. So, Allison, thank you very much for being with me. So you are right in the middle of this. Um, let's just start with when you realized you, you're a startup. You've got money at this bank. You're using that money to make payroll and other things. When did you find out something was wrong? So my co-founder, Audrey Wu, and I received an email from one of our seed investors. Um, the email seemed cryptic. It was strange. It was urgent. Uh, it was not like the other emails he sends. And we were in meetings. You know, We run a busy maternal health startup. We have so many concerns every day that this email just didn't make sense. So a few hours later, I called the investor and I said, hey, what was this email about? He was out of breath, like he had just run a marathon. And he said, take your money out of SBB. Go into your account, take your money out as soon as possible. And you know, as a business owner, my co-founder Audrey and I constantly think about two things. We think about our team, the people we employ and their families, and we think about our patients the mothers, the new moms, and the families that we support and their families. And so for us, it was do this now or else. Okay, and this was what, yesterday or the day before? This was yesterday between the hours of noon and 3 p.m. Okay, yesterday between the hours of noon and 3 p.m., you get this. So then you, you do it. You go and you, re and, and, and how does that happen? They, they actually give you the money? I mean, these are the three hours before the world fell apart. So what happened then? Well, we were incredibly lucky to have that news early from an investor. Um, we didn't withdraw the money immediately. You know, we're conscientious business owners. We spoke to a few other investors. We spoke to friends. I mean, I, this is like calls going off the hook for the last 36 hours. When we felt confident that this was going to be a crisis, Audrey acted fast. And this is the kind of fear that actually incites focus. We withdrew the money through transfers and wires as soon as possible. I mean, she was withdrawing small amounts, big amounts, just to not set off an AI that might limit our withdrawals. And we were able to remove, this was not our only bank account, but we were able to remove the majority of the funds so that what was left when the website crashed was below the $250,000 FDIC. Right, so you have money that. there, and I know, for, and the FDIC, in terms of because the amount, I mean, obviously you had a lot more than that there. You were able to get that out. The amount that you have that's insured now by the FDIC, the $250,000, your understanding is you're going to get that pretty much right away. What we're hearing is by Monday. Okay, so that, that I think that should give people calm. The FDIC, if you're under the limit, um, it gives you, is, 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 holding, is holding strong on this. So Barron's is reporting that the CEO, Greg Becker, I just mentioned him. I know you weren't on that call, but he had that call, um, that he sold nearly $3.6 million in stock less than two weeks ago. That's obviously worth zero tonight. I mean, I know you don't necessarily know the circumstances of that, and I'm not trying to say it was nefarious. I'm just saying, what's your reaction when you hear that? Aaron, my reaction is that 
this is so much bigger than a bank. I run a, a nationwide telehealth company. We serve you know, prenatal and postpartum patients. I have friends in healthcare tech, in financial tech, in property tech. All of us see the impact on human life. And so for us, you know, a call with the CEO of the bank is not our first priority. Our first priority is securing those funds and making sure we can meet payroll on the 15th. So, you know, the, the human impact of this, I think, is something I cannot underscore enough. And, you know, my heart goes out to so many business owners, not just startups, but small business, agriculture, all the kinds of companies that bank with SVB, where their founders and owners are struggling right now, trying to make ends meet, trying to make pay. And so you fear and what you see is, I mean, we're not even talking about other banks. We're talking about SVB itself, but that the impacts of this are significant. I mean, they will affect everyday Americans. They will not just affect CEOs like me. We have team members in Arkansas, North Carolina, Washington State, Minnesota. Those people would be affected too had we not gotten those funds out in time.